Today I went to Electronic Connections here in Edmonton to pick up some supplies to make some LED lamps. So um, I just thought I'd share with you what happened while I was at the store. Okay, so with the LED, we do have something that's uh, three millimeters, so it'll be a bit smaller. Okay. Um, the shrink tubing, that's that's not a problem at all. We definitely have something that will be able to accommodate that. Uh, even if you need a little bit more wire, I don't think we have something with quite the same um, insulation. But that uh, I don't think is really important. Wire is wire. Wire is wire. And if it's going to be hidden in here, then it really doesn't matter at all, I'd say. Yeah. Um, but as for the switch, that's the tricky thing. Because we don't have anything quite this small. I mean, this is just absolutely tiny, tiny, tiny. <laughs> it's uh, absolutely adorable. But because um, uh, uh, the smallest slider switch we have is probably four times the size of that. I can bring them out okay. and uh, I can show you what we got here and we can try and figure things out from there. Okay. All right. Okay, thanks. So what are you showing me here? Okay, so here we have the uh, the LED, which is significantly smaller than this one here. This is the three millimeter. Okay. And uh, up we go. I'm thinking it should fit on here pretty good. Okay. Yeah, you can cram that on there a little ways or just have it standing off there that much. But you're definitely going to need to have heat shrink on there. Yeah. Which... Uh, well, yeah, because the copper is going to conduct oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. electricity, obviously. Uh, you're going to be adding a little bit of bulk, though. So it might be a little tricky to cram it in there. Um, but, hey, that's a problem for future you, right? So, okay. And then we got the switch here. Again, way bigger <laughs> than this thing. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. This thing's about the size of the base. It's... Uh, but uh, it's just a uh, single pole. Uh, with the three contacts here, yeah. um, it might be a little more complicated, but truth be told, you only need to worry about hooking up two of the contacts. So the middle contact and then one of the sides. doesn't matter which one. Okay, and then yeah. how would you attach the battery to that? Attaching the battery to this, uh, you would just be, um, you'd be wiring it in the line. So you would just have one of these wires yeah. and you would cut it there yeah. and then you'd have one side going to the middle yeah. and then the other side going to uh, uh, the outside contact. Okay. But if I didn't use that battery pack and I wanted to create my own battery pack, what would you do? You'd be doing the same thing. You would be uh, using uh, one, one side um, and then just uh, cutting it and then putting it midpoint in the switch. Solder it off? Solder, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. That'd be the, uh, the more uh But how would you encase it with it. the battery? Uh, well, there are the mounting holes right here on either side of the switch. Okay. So you'd be able to mount it onto, um, uh, you said you are going to make a floor light out of this, right? Right. Okay. So if you have a, a base, uh, I don't know if you'd want to use a pile of washers or something like that okay. and uh, just uh, have it mounted in there. Uh, you could even uh, use epoxy to hold it in place. Okay. Um, but the switch is going to dictate just how big. This is magnetic? Yeah, it's magnetic. Oh, okay. That, that's neat. <laughs> so there's, you put a magnet on the ceiling of the golf house? So oh. Okay. So you don't have to wire it, right? Fun. Okay. Well, you're not going to be using a uh, floor lamp, but the floor lamps on the ceiling, so Obviously I'm guessing you don't need yeah. to worry about that. Um, regardless, going back to the base, uh, you could easily make a base large enough to encase that. Um, these tabs can be bent back. It doesn't affect the functionality of the switch. Okay. Um, or if you want to, you could just remove them. Okay, just to make it smaller? Just to make it up a little bit smaller. Okay. Yeah. Because, yeah, these are strictly there for mounting. Yeah. It, it doesn't really um, contribute to the functionality of the switch. So how would you uh, attach the battery to that piece? Then? Uh, attaching the battery? Uh, uh, one of the terminals would be uh, 
going from the switch to the battery. To the top of the battery? Uh, yeah. And yeah, then the other one the, would go to the bottom of the battery? Uh, the other one would go to the light. Uh, so the, the uh, sorry, the other terminal on the battery would go to the light. Okay. So then you'd have uh, the, this is a really bad demonstration here, but so you'd have the, the center terminal, let's say, going to the lamp, and then you'd have the other terminal going to the battery, and then from the battery going to the lamp. Okay. Yeah. Simple as that. Uh, the only problem is that since this is an LED, you need to make sure you have the polarity hooked up right. Uh, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. So one of those, now do they show you by looking at the LED, how can you tell which is positive and which is negative? Okay. Is one shorter than the other? Uh, one is shorter than the other. Okay. Uh, but if you snip these and they're the same height, oh no, what do you do? Uh, there actually is a way to tell looking very closely at the body of the uh, LED. Yeah. Uh, one side is flat. Yeah. yeah, there it is. This is the flat side here. Yeah. It might be a little hard to, to see or not. Okay. Um, under the right magnification, it's fairly easy to see. Yeah. And the flat side, that's the way, that's uh, where the current's going to go to. That's the way I remember it. Okay. So, so the flat side, that's going to be your negative terminal. So, and the current flows from positive to negative. Okay. So with the negative terminal, that's the one where you're going to be sending that back to the battery. So if you take this battery out of here and put it in between, won't it light up? Oh yeah, totally will. We can do that right now. If I can get the battery out. It just opens this little door. All right, so we have the negative terminal here, we have the positive terminal there, and the light's right up. Okay, so that's pretty white. Do you have ones that are like a softer yellow color? Uh, we do have yellow, yeah. uh, but it's not a warm white. It's a very much a yellow color. Yeah. I'm not sure if you want to go in that direction. I can bring them out, we can take a look and sure. see what happens. Okay, so. sounds great. Let's look how the yellow performs here. The, okay, that's a little bit better there. Yeah, that's way better. And it's not yellow yellow. It's more of a soft white, in my opinion. Okay. What do you think? Uh, I don't know. To me, that looks pretty yellow. More orangey yellow than anything. Yeah. But, um, but I don't like that glaring white bright brightness. No. No, that's for... Unless it's encased in a bead that's like maybe colored. I could work. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying it won't. Um, yeah. I'm just saying you might be making more work for yourself than you want. But <laughs> well, I've got to make a lampshade. I can't just put a bulb, a bare bulb. bulb on it. Right? Okay. So you want this to look classy, not like some well, kind trailer of a, park uh, thing, or <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, my houses are antiques, so okay. Yeah. yeah. So I want to kind of design it to kind of go with the houses. Sure. That sounds like a great idea. Let's just slide right on there. Oh yeah. There you go, that'll be plenty big enough. Okay, and uh, what is that? This is called shrink tubing, or sorry, heat shrink tubing. And this is actually single wall. Okay. So this only has a shrink ratio of two to one. Okay. And the diameter of this one is 3 64ths of an inch. Okay. So this will shrink down to three one twenty eighths of an inch <laughs> so i so i just uh, basically attach the wire yeah yeah and just yeah. screw like i could just like wrap the wire around it really tight right uh you could you yeah. could uh, maybe put a dab of solder on there to make sure it's not going to go anywhere okay and then you want to slide it over top well what you want to do is you'll slide uh, it have, over top first yeah <laughs> slide it over top first yeah then um yeah do the wire attachment yeah. And then you just slide the sleeve over. Yeah. And I'm thinking this will be uh, enough because there's quite a bit of wiggle room here. Yeah. And once you uh, shrink it down, and you can use um, a, a heat gun, which uh, has a bit more control, or or a lighter. 
uh, that's a, a little bit more dangerous uh, or a candle or something like that yeah uh, it depends what you're um, what you're trying to do okay but that but, protects and insulates it so the wires can't touch one oh another. yeah yeah this yeah. is a fairly durable uh, rubber here yeah. and once it's shrunk down it's even thicker yeah uh, there is another type of heat shrink you can get which is dual wall yeah. uh, but that's more for outdoor applications because it has an adhesive lining too yeah but you mentioned that this is for a dollhouse yeah. and so this isn't going outdoors or yeah. or uh, i mean if you're doing like a, a christmas installation or something like that and you're going to have it outside or in a tree i'd recommend the dual wall yeah but um, the single wall would be fine for uh, for an antique dollhouse Perfect. So this guy, Stephen Clark, was just a sweetheart and gave me all kinds of information. It was like super, super helpful. Um, I didn't end up using the switch that I bought from him, but I will keep it and try it for another time. I've just got to figure out a way to house the batteries. Uh, <laughs> so the batteries that I am going to be using are the CR2032 batteries, which are just commonly found almost anywhere. Um, I did end up buying these little make market LED lights from... Uh, um, the local Michaels store, but uh, they were extremely expensive, like ridiculously expensive. When you can compare with uh, Timu, you can get six of these button coin battery cell uh, socket holders. You just got to make sure to Google CR2032, which is the type of battery. Um, three bucks for six of them so um, this little uh, fireplace uh, piece I got uh, at the half price sale it did not work I tore out the battery and I just wanted to test it to decide whether or not it should be thrown out or not and uh, I put it uh, on the battery and yes it does light up but you can see it barely lights up so this is probably a 12 volt battery they don't operate particularly well with these uh, uh, CR2032 batteries but as you can see the yellow one is bright 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 so um, this is what I'm going to use inside this little fireplace and look how nice that looks that's just absolutely brilliant. Now, I could have put a red one in, but I think the yellow looks just fine. So you can see the difference between the um, uh, bulb on the left is the one I bought at the electronics store. The bulb on the right is the one that came with the one from uh, Michael's. So I'm just uh, uh, cut the Michael's one off, and now I'm testing to make sure that I've got... A good LED light and um, remember what uh, the electronics guy said you've got to make sure that it's hooked up correctly if it's not hooked up correctly then it will not work so I'm just testing it to make sure that it works so first of all what I've got to do is is I've got to uh, put the little um, I don't know what you would call them. They're like almost like a stretch and seal little piece of plastic um, that you tuck over top of the wires and you slide far away from where you're soldering. And then after you're finished doing the solder, then you're going to pull that little plastic piece up and then you're going to use uh, either a lighter or a heat gun and you're going to shrink wrap it. So that means that your soldered piece will be like completely protected and you don't have to worry about the wires touching one another so uh, i don't have any fancy wire strippers so i just used a bic lighter to, t to take off the plastic coating that is on the wires so that i can go ahead and solder the new led onto these wires so it is a little bit messy and uh, the one mistake that I did make that I didn't show on this video because um, I cut it out is I ended up with one piece longer than the other and that's less than ideal. They both have to be the exact same length. So I ended up having to redo that part, but that's okay. Um, we live and learn. So 
there you go so now I've got it the correct length and I'm testing it again to make sure that I've got it hooked up correctly and uh, now the leads on this LED light are far too long but I'm just going to go ahead and trim it down and make it the size that I need it to be so you can see here I just got out a good pair of scissors and I'm just snipping them off so I'm just going to snip them off one at a time and do the soldering. So um, what I'm doing is, is I'm just uh, taking the bare wire and wrapping it around the correct LED post. And I'm wrapping it around nice and tight. And uh, then I've got out the flux and the solder and the soldering gun. So I got to plug the solder iron in and leave it sit for at least 15 minutes so that it's really super good and hot. Otherwise, uh, this little cheapy one doesn't work all that well. So, um, um, yeah, I, you know, when it comes to soldering irons, you kind of get what you pay for. And it doesn't get any cheaper than this particular one. So, but the thing that I do like about it is the fact that it's got a really tiny tip on the end which is super convenient so um so i'm just uh i've put uh flux on it and i'm just uh testing it out and making sure that it's hot enough which it is and i'm just getting the solder on and there you go see it's not that hard um look at my hands shaking <laughs> It's not really that my hands are shaking. It's just that this little piece is so flimsy and it's moving around on me. So it's better to probably come in it from the other side. There you go. I had to turn it over. It's trying to do it backwards. <laughs> so now I'm just snipping off the second post and I'm going to solder the second post on or the second connection. And once again, <clears throat> can't stress how important that flux is because that's what uh, cleans the metal and makes the connection good. So I'm just taking that second one and I'm just going to wrap it around super tight. You can see here. Uh, yeah, and you just really got to make sure that it's on there really good and tight. And yes, those wires also need a little bit of flux as well. So um, I don't uh, solder electronics on a regular basis. So I'm a little slower at it than probably people that do this professionally. But I'm getting the job done nonetheless. So, okay. So um, I'm just making sure that none of the wires are touching one another. So the negative cannot touch the positive. Otherwise, you're going to have a, um, a bad circuit, and we don't want that. So there you go. So now I've got uh, everything all ready to solder, and I'm going to solder that second piece on. So I know I promised you uh, a lamp <laughs> in this video, but I also wanted to, first of all, uh, make sure that... Uh, um, I fixed this little fireplace because it's way too nice not to use it. And uh, since I've got the stuff, I figured, yeah, why not? I might as well just do it up. So, and once again, I'm just testing the connection to make sure that it's a good connection. And it is. And as soon as I get that, so I'm going to leave it so that it's turned on. And I'm going to solder it. Okay, so now both both the pieces have been soldered. So now both the pieces have been soldered. And what I've done is, is I pulled up that insulating tube. And now I'm heat shrinking it. So basically what I'm doing is, is I'm just uh, going at it, not directly with the lighter, a little ways away. And that little uh, piece of shrink wrap uh, tubing will then... Um, suck on to the part that's uh, been soldered and hold it in there nice and firm insulate the wires so that they can't touch one another so sorry I'm a little bit out of frame but I think you get the idea so that um, uh, shrink wrap tubing was twice as big until it was heated up and then once it was heated up it um, just went on there just perfect um so so now 
I'm just going to put the new little uh, LED light in and you can see the original one was put in with scotch tape. So for lack of a better idea, I'm also going to use scotch tape to mount this in. So now it's in there and let's test it out. There you go. That looks really good. It works excellent. So now the final thing that I have to do is secure the wire to the back of it so that the light doesn't keep on popping in and out. Scotch tape is so handy. <laughs> so yeah, it definitely serves its purpose. That's for sure. So, and that's how the original one was mounted in there. So I don't feel bad doing it and it will be at the back. So nobody will be able to see it. And I guess it's kind of an easy thing to use because if I ever need to take this little LED light out of here, it'll be certainly easy to remove. So when I display this, um, little fireplace uh, piece. I'll just have to make sure that the little remote control to operate it is tucked behind a piece of furniture and well hidden. So, but certainly a lot smaller battery pack than what you get at the dollar store when you buy a string of LED lights that have uh, two AA batteries in it. Um, this is just a fraction of the size, which is what I really need. So, I've got this little uh, plastic cap. I'm not sure where it came from. I actually have two of them. And uh, this is what I'm going to use for the base of the lamp. So I'm once again heating up the soldering iron and I'm just going to use it to melt a little hole in the top and also in the side of this little cap. This is going to be the base of my lamp. So I'm just uh, putting a little hole in it and then I cut a three quarter of an inch long piece of copper uh, um, tubing and then I strip the little lights off or sorry strip the little wires off and um, strung them up into the through the base and up the center of the copper tubing and I'm just now testing the LED light and as you can see it works great. I'm not going to bore you guys by showing you my soldering job again, but uh, um, I will show you that now it is soldered. <laughs> so, and then once again, I also use that insulating heat uh, shrink wrap uh, tubing on it. So there you go. So now I'm just painting the base black and uh, I sped it up so you wouldn't have to watch me paint because that's boring. Um, for the lampshade, I used one of those um, little beads that are similar to Pandora beads, but that's not a real Pandora bead. It's just a, a fake one. Um, I bought a whole bag of them from a local store that's going out of business uh, for $10. So I've got like quite a few of them that I can make lamps out of. And then I just... Uh, glued a little jewelry finding uh, on the top of it and then I put a little piece of wire around the bottom of it and it's dry now so now I've got out the rub and buff um, or this is a generic brand of rub and buff um, in gold. I wished I had copper to match the rest of the fixtures on the lamp but I still think the gold will look quite nice. I'm using a piece of paper towel and I'm just uh, rubbing it onto the black surface just to kind of uh, um, give it a nice look. The black was way too stark. Um, so I think this kind of just finishes the lamp off quite nicely. I love these little battery holders because uh, they're going to be super easy to hide. So there you go. That's a 124 scale um, table that that lamp is sitting on. And of course you could make these lamps in any scale, but uh, this one happens to be 124 scale. And there's my little fireplace insert uh, all lit up. I think they look uh, pretty good. Um, I think practice makes perfect. I've got some other ideas for making floor lamps as well. And I do have some jewelry findings that would make great uh, 
great lampshades. So there you go. That's what it looks like in the dark. These LED lights are just fantastic. Like they really, really do light up uh, quite well. So, well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. That's pretty much it for today. If you enjoyed today's video and would like to help support my channel, you can do so by buying me a coffee. Just go to www.buymeacoffee.com slash Lisa Dobo. Thank you very much to everyone that has supported me on buymeacoffee.com. It's appreciated more than you know. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. It's free of charge. Hit that notification bell, and then that way you'll know every time I upload a new video. And please leave comments below and let me know what you thought of today's video. Also, if you could hit that like button, that really helps my algorithm as well. And uh, thank you again for watching. And once again, have the best day ever.